Okay po. So, good morning po to B1. So, this is the record discussion of our subject, Teaching and Assessment in Macro Skills. So, um, I know that this is unfamiliar to you because this is new to your ear and new for your lesson or your learning. So, we're going to make um, may himay, no? these terminologies the title, the title itself of our subject for, uh, for us and for you guys to really understand of what macro skills are or, ma or macro skill is, okay? So when we say teaching and assessment, okay? So we have to analyze and we have to learn, guys, you as future educators, future teachers, what are the things that you have to learn or to discuss yourself or to um, tawag dito, ano yung mga bagay na dapat nating malaman in uh, able for us to be efficient and effective in learning, okay? And as well as assessment. So when we say assessment, if we are not out to learning or to um, teaching, kapag sa atin ay hindi naturo or hindi natin natutunan, no? hindi po natin alam kung paano ituturo in the future, we could not, we could not assess the different skills of our students, okay? And when we say assessment, this is how you will assess or determine the learning process of your students. Understood? Okay? So first, guys, so alam na natin yung teaching assessment. So when we say assessment, kulitin ko, these are the different measurement techniques and the ways on how you categorize the strength and the weaknesses of your students, okay? So let us define what is a skill. Okay, wait lang po ha. Ayaw man next ng aking PowerPoint. Okay, so first, let us discuss what is macro. What is macro skills? Okay, para po mas maintindihan natin. So when we say macro, guys, makinig mabuti ha. I need you to present to me um, your learnings through your notes that you have written or type written on your words or your notebooks. Understood? Okay, so when we say macro, the meaning of macro is being large, thick, or exceptionally prominent. Okay, it comes from the Greek word macros. It is the opposite of the word micro. Okay, so when we say macro, no, macro, diba? meron tayong tinatawag na microphone, okay, and then meron tayong speaker. So yung microphone, that is the little version or the small version of the speaker or the anything that is automated for us to record or to um to enhance or everyone to hear our voice and when we say macro guys macro this is the large the big one the thick the exceptionally prominent so when we say macro skills kapag pinagsama natin yung macro and the skills so these are the um the viewpoint the large viewpoint of the skills how could we categorize the learning or the skill of our student in a way that we could understand what are they, their basic needs or what are the basic skills, okay? So, yung macro skills, pumapaikot po siya sa apat na skill or sa apat na categorization po ng um, skill na ginagamit ng mga bata. And when we say skill, that are the attained, um, attained um, ability of our students. Okay, so that is the macro skill. Okay po. So for us to really understand, guys, so we have, when we learn a language, there are four skills that we need to complete for complete communication. Okay, I repeat, when we learn a language, there are four skills that we need for complete communication. So when we learn our native language, we usually learn to listen first, no? We and then we speak, and then we read, and finally we write. 
okay? They are called the four language skill or the four basic skills, also known as the macro skill, okay? So, ulitin natin, kapag sinabi natin, guys, na macro skill, these are the major skills that we use to learn language, that we use for us to have a complete communication skill. Intindihan natin? So, in simple way or in simple understanding, we could identify that this subject is about the teaching and assessment of our four major communication and language skills, which are the listening, speaking, reading, and writing. Intindihan natin. So, macro skills are most commonly referred to, again, listening, speaking, reading, and writing in English language. Okay? So, let's first define what is listening. So, when we say listening, basahin na lang natin muna. This is a communication technique that requires the listener to understand, interpret, and evaluate what he or she hears. So, listening effectively improves personal relationships through, wait lang po ah. So, when we say listening, listening effectively improves personal relationships through the reduction of conflict and strengthens cooperation through a collective understanding while speaking is a vocalization of human communication. So being able to express an idea, concept, or opinion through speech is the essential in the communicative process and languages are about communication. Okay? So a good language teacher plans lessons, a sequence of lessons, which includes a mixture of all the macro skills rather than focusing on developing only one macro skill at a time. So when we say listening class, listening is the most important skill in communication. I repeat, listening is the most important skill in communication. It is the mental um, operation involving processing um, sound waves, interpreting their meanings, and storing them in the memory. When we say listening class, it is a communication technique that requires um, the listeners to understand, not just to understand, but to interpret and evaluate what they hear. Okay, so it paves way, it paves the way for other skills to uh, to tower over the other other skills because of its significance in terms of speech, of discussion, and freedom of expression. So they serve. Um, this, the listening, guys, it serves as an approach to make everybody comprehend which is being said, okay? So it is closely related to the speaking and the listening as well. It enables the person to soak in any information that is given to them, okay? So through listening, to be one, listen carefully, the information can be passed on to another party later on after the conversation. So on the other hand, learners will develop prediction and anticipation in anticipation, um, what is this? The skills, anticipation skills in listening. So without listening, communication will be crippled. Okay, when we say crippled, it would not be comprehended, it would not be understood, it would not be um, um, tawag dito, hindi siya may interpret in the first place, okay? So, it is vital and should be a main part of communication, okay? So, we have the second language or the L2 na tinatawag, which is the English, and listening comprehension is very complex. It is a very complex process. So, it is crucial in the development of second language com competence. Okay, so listening is very important. It's, it's very crucial and it's um complex process. Okay, kaya nga di ba tayo kapag tayo ay nakikipag-usap using our in L2 or the, uh, or the second language, we tend to say, can you repeat it again? Pardon me, okay? Kasi po, 
crucial yung listening process. Kasi nandyan si comprehension na tinatawag. Okay? So, kailangan makinig mabuti and we know how to interpret the language itself. Okay? So, um, listeners use both um, bottom-up processes. Alam niyo po ito? Yung bottom-up and top-down. So, if you don't know, let's talk about it. And we're going to discuss it further later. Okay? So, linguistic knowledge. So, when we say bottom-up, this is the linguistic knowledge and the top-down, the top-down process or the prior knowledge um, to comprehend. So, here, guys, knowing the context of a listening text and the purpose for listening greatly, greatly reduces the burden of comprehension. Okay? So, this will help students learn how to listen and develop the metacognitive knowledge and strategies crucial to um to success in listening comprehension okay okay so next book okay, wait again huh? Okay, so we have this listening strategy. Ito yung sinasabi ko kanina. So when we say listening strategies, these are techniques or activities that contribute directly to the comprehension and recall of the listening input. Listening strategies can be classified by how the listeners processes the input. So we have the top-down strategies and the bottom-up strategies. So when we say top-down strategies, up, down. Okay, so when we say tap, these are focusing or this is, um, um, tawag dito, uh, ito po ay tumutukoy sa listener or dun sa nagbabasa. And when we say down, ito po yung text. Ito po yung um, information na binabasa or iniintindi natin. So when we say tap down strategy, the listener and the text base. Okay, listener. Tapos text, tap, tsaka down, yung mata mo, tapos yung binabasa mo. The listener taps into background knowledge of the topic, the situation or context, the type of text, and the language. This background knowledge activates a set of expectation that helps the listener to interpret what is heard and anticipate what will come next. Top-down strategies includes listening for the main idea, predicting, Drawing inferences and summarizing. Okay, so when we say top down, the listener or the one that is really um the one that is listening or doing a comprehension to the text is depending on the idea of what has or what the listener has, what the um what the um the person has. For example, we are talking about the animals. So when we say top-down strategy, we are um, relying on what we know about the animals, the listener or the speaker. Okay, so I know about that animals that they have, um, they are, um, have different inhabitants. They have different um, types or they have different kinds. Okay, and when we say bottom-up, bottom up strategy for example again we are talking about animals we don't know about animals or we know that they have or we have the type of animals ayun lang ang alam natin the type of animals but the bottom up strategy would give us the idea that animals have different sounds they have different um they have different types of fur of feather and so and so on Okay, so bottom-up strategy are text-based that the listener relies on the language in the message. That is the combination of sounds, words, and grammar that creates meaning. Bottom-up strategies include listening for specific details, recognizing cognates, recognizing word order patterns. Okay, so that is the top-down strategies and bottom-up strategies. So, ko, when we say bottom-up a top down strategy um this is the prior knowledge so what what is what does the listener 
or the person knew about the topic that is being written, yung babasahin mo or what has been said. And when we say bottom up, this is the linguistic knowledge. Ano ba yung lang, ano ba yung mga bagay or mga information na makukuha or matututunan natin dun sa binabasa natin or dun sa pinapakinggan natin. Hindi niya natin yon. Ulitin ko. Pag bottom up, ano po ulit? Kapag bottom up po, Okay, so when we say bottom up, this is the linguistic language or linguistic knowledge. Everything that we will learn on the things that we are listening or the day. And when we say top down, this is the prior knowledge. Idinudugtong, idinalagay, iniaayo natin yung mga prior knowledge natin dun sa down, dun sa binabasa natin. Okay? So, let's continue. So, we have this question. How much do learners retain from the listening input? Ano daw po? Or paano natututo si student, si listener, si learner doon sa bagay na pinapakinggan niya? Okay? Listening lang tayo ha? Listening. Okay. So, we have this learning pyramid. We have the average student's retention rates. And then, dun po sa, um, kung makikita natin sa right side, these are um, the strategy that we are doing, enable for the students to learn. So, in lecture, we have 0%. Okay? Ang estudyante daw po ay hindi po natututo. Or kung natututo man bahagya, no? That could be 0.1%, 1% to 2% only. And in reading, 10% only. Audiovisual, sinamahan na ng picture, sinamahan na ng sounds, we have 20%. Demonstration, 30%. Discussion, 50%. When we say, guys, lecture and discussion, that is very different, ha? When we say le lecture, that is just, um, that is just um, seeing, no? Titignan lang kung, for example, we are reading, pero wala siyang kasamang comprehension. That is lecture. Okay? But when we say demonstration, dyan na po papasokan ng example, dyan na papasokan ng explanation. Kaya magkaiba po yan. Okay? And then we have discussion, 50%. 50% is, um, um, when we say discussion, that is elaborating the ideas, such as giving examples, such as giving assessment, ano pa ba? Um, giving activities that would enhance the student's learning. Okay po? Practice doing, 75%. And teach others, that is 90%. So what does it mean? It does mean that when you share, share or you have the peer assessment or the peer communication, peer um, evaluation, you will, um, you will, you tend to have... Um, learnings that is beyond your um beyond your ability kaya nga po no kapag nagre-review i remember when we done when, when we have done face to face class back when you are in elementary and high school kung maalala natin um kapag tayo ay nagpi-peer or nagpa-partner tapos nagme-memorize tayo, nagme-memorize tayo ng mga idea. Hindi lang nagme-memorize, kundi nagtatanungan. Yung pala yung tamang term. Nagtatanungan tayo or nagdi-discuss tayo sa classmate natin nung tamang sagot or nung tamang process kung paano gawin, nung solution and the process. We learn from ourselves. Tama ba? And when we are teaching others, we have these thoughts or we have this um, idea that I have to 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 um to perfectly analyze or to perfectly teach what has been asked so the tendency you will study 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 more and you teach others that's why you learn um so much for yourself that even um months will pass years will pass and you still know about it because you teach it to others that's why you have the mastery of the things that you have learned. So, mali now? Okay, so let's continue. So, we have the suggestions for improving 
your listening skill, improving our listening skill. So first, before you listen, think about the topics or the text that you are going to listen. Okay? Ulitin ko, before you listen, guys, think about the topic of the text you are going to listen to. So um, you can ask the question to yourself, what you already know about it? What could be what could possibly be the content of the text? Okay. Which words come to mind that you already know? Okay. Which words would you want to look up? Okay. If you have to do a task on the listening text, check whether you have understood the task correctly. Okay. So think about what type of text you're going to listen to, what you know about this type of text and always relax and make yourself ready to pay attention to the listening text okay and we also have the suggestions on improving your listening skills while you are listening so while you are listening guys it is necessary to understand every single words okay so um when we say this, guys, try to ignore those words that you think are less important anyway. Okay po? Kasi po kung tatandaan natin word for word, diba? nakakapagod yun. At di natin yun kaya. So if there are words or issues that you don't understand, use your general knowledge as well as the context to find out the meaning. Okay? If you still don't know something, use a dictionary. To look up the words or ask someone else for help. Okay po? Huwag po tayo mahiya magtanong kapag lalo na kapag hindi natin alam. Kasi po kapag po um, if we are learning something and there is an a part or there is an idea that you don't know or you don't understand automatically everything that follows hindi mo na yun maintindihan. So, it's really important that you will ask question to your teachers, to your peer, kasi baka ikaw lang yung hindi na maintindi or whatever. Okay? So, focus on keywords and facts. It is very important that you are taking notes. You are not taking down everything, but every single word, but focus on the keywords that will help you understand it. Okay? So, take notes to support your memory. Okay po? So, note or our yung mga sinusulat natin whenever we are listening is very important kasi po ang mind natin hindi yan kaya mag mag store ng napakaraming information that's why recording and noting is very important okay so intonation and stress of the speakers can help you understand um what you hear okay try to think ahead what might happen next or what might the speaker say so and which words might they use okay and after listening think about the text again so think about the text again um have you understood have, have you understood uh the main points remember the speculations you made before you listened okay did you did they come through okay and always review your notes and that is the time you could ask question again okay hindi po masama magtanong no masama po yung may tanong ba tayo tapos sasagot natin wala and then the the um at the end of time ang sisi natin as a teacher kasi hindi na intindihan okay po intindihan kaya po wag po tayong hiya mag ask for clarification no po students and after listening, guys, check whether you have completed your task correctly. Have you had only any problems when listening? Do you have any problems now to complete your task? Or, and you may identify your problems and ask someone for help and listen again to different or to difficult passages. Okay, po? Okay. So here are some examples of activities you can introduce in class or to yourself for active listening with integration with other skills. So I have here only one, which is for me. 
the most effective ways to improve our listening skills, which is the dual dictation. So when we say du 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 dual dictation, you may ask your students, your future students, or yourself to get into pairs to write a dialogue. Maghanap ng partner. Okay? So when student A is speaking, student B should write down what they are saying and vice versa. Okay? So when they have finished the conversation, guys, they should check what each other has written and put the two sides of the conversation together. So you could ask, you could then ask your students to perform their dialogue again to rest the again and again to the rest of the class or to swap with other pairs. So this activity, guys, works well or works best if you give the students or yourself a theme or a role play. For example, a conversation between friends about holidays, um, an, ar an argument between si siblings, um, an interview with a famous person, ano pa ba? a scene from a film, class memory quiz. So ask one student at a time to go to the front of the class Ask the rest of the class to ask them any questions like, um, like, what is your favorite color, your food, your band, the, the band, your favorite band? What do you have for lunch? Or which country would you like to visit the most? Okay, so ganyan po, mga ganyang questions, you could, um, you could improve your listening skills. No, not just the listening skills, but those other skills or integration with the other skills. Okay, so that is very important. Okay, po. So we are done with listening. Let us now go to speaking. So when we say speaking, guys, di ba kanina sabi ko in macro skills we have four important skills or four macro skills which is very important in language or in communication. We are going to discuss two muna ha, which is the listening and the speaking. Okay? And then on our next session or on our next discussion, we are going to discuss reading and um, ano ba ba? reading and writing. Okay po? So we have speaking. So when we say speaking, this is the delivery of language through the mouth. The speak we create sounds using many parts of our body, including the lungs, vocal tract, vocal cords, tongue, teeth, and lips. Okay po? So when we say speaking, guys, speaking is the second of the four language skills. This is the second of the most important among the listening, the reading, and the writing. So how could we categorize that? We have listening as the most important. Speaking, the next one, reading as the less important and writing as the least important. So in our own language, speaking is usually the second language, the second language skills that we learn, okay? This vocalized form of language usually requires at least one listener. And when two or more people speak or talk to each other, the conversion Conversation is what we call the dialogue. I repeat, when two or more people speak or talk to each other, the conversation is called a dialogue. So speech, guys, can, um, can flow naturally. Speech. speech can flow naturally from one person to another in the form of dialogue. It can also be planned or rehearsed as in the delivery of speech or presentation. So it is said here that speaking can be formal or informal. So how could the speaking be in informal ways? Informal speaking is typically used with family and friends or people you know well. And when we say formal, this is the, the speaking of course in business or academic situations or when meeting people for the first time, okay? So speaking, guys, is probably the language skills that most language learners wish to perfect as soon as possible, right? Kasi papasok dyan, lalong-lalo tayong mga teacher, no? 
we are prone to public speaking, teaching, wherein we are required to use the formal form of speaking because we are facing or we are talking professionally and we are talking to our students which will cope or which will follow whatever we say. So we should talk formally. Okay? Okay pa? Okay, so um, let's continue. So it is, it used to be the only language skill that was difficult to practice online. And this is no longer the case. English learners guys can um, practice speaking online using voice or video chat and services like um, ano ba? Skype, Zoom, whatever we are using in communication. They can also record and upload their voice for other people to listen to. Okay, so what is meant by teaching speaking is to teach ESL learners too. So when we say ESL, English as second language. So what is meant by teaching speaking is to teach English as second language learners too. So why is it important to allow the students learn speaking language? Okay. So number one, it produces the English speech sounds and sound patterns. Number two, it uses words and sentence stress, intonation patterns, and the rhythm of the second language. Number three, select the appropriate words and sentences according to the proper social setting, audience, situation, and subject matter, and organize their thoughts in meaningful and logical sequence. So ito po yung mga bagay na dapat natin tandaan or dapat natin isaalang-alang when we are teaching the second language to our students. Okay, class, when you are an ESL teacher, when we say ESL teacher, you are teaching your students the English structure and the English language. Okay? Pag si English structure, pag sinabi natin English structure, dyan papasok si subject and verb agreement, subject predicate, the different um the different language structure and we also have the verb the 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 noun the adjectives and etc okay kapag tinuro natin yan it is really important that you have the mastery on the english language okay pag sinabi natin english language you know the translation of every filipino terms in the english it is very important but don't worry it will be learned in the process. You don't have to force yourself to learn the language itself because it is a due process. Okay? So what is the first thing that you should do? Mamaya matututunan natin yan. Use the language. Yes, that is a very important way. Use the language. If you don't practice the language, you will not learn it in the first place. Okay po? So we have the principles for teaching speaking, speaking skills. Number one, focus on both fluency and accuracy. When we say fluency, that is the mastery of the sounds. And when we say accuracy, that is the mastery of the usage. Okay? Provide intrinsically motivating techniques. Encourage the use of authentic language. Provide appropriate feedback and corrections. Capitalize on the natural link between speaking and listening. Give students opportunities to initiate oral communication, encourage the development of speaking strategies. When you are already a teacher to be one, most especially on high school students, always start with, always start, siguro mga isang buwan, balawang buwan ng klase nyo sa English language. Always um, allow them or always encourage them to bring um, dictionaries, Lagi kayong maglalabas ng mga words, translations, para pumatuto sila. Kasi guys, kapag pumunta kayo sa pag-aaral ng noun, adjectives, verbs, and everything, okay, simili metaphor, kapag hindi nila alam ang language, hindi sila matututo. Kaya the first to three months of your subject, encourage them to learn the language. Kasi paano sila matututo ng mga words na tran na na kung paano nila ikakategorize yun kung verb yun, kung adjective yun, kung noun yun or what, kung hindi nila alam yung 
language. Okay? So, tayo ngayon pa lang as a student, dahil hindi tayo madaling makakakonek sa mga teachers natin kasi we are not doing face-to-face class, hindi natin sila makakausap. Um, Kawa tayo ng paraan like peer evaluation. Mga classmates yung magkaroon kayo ng partner na matututo kayo or matutulungan kayo, yung matutulungan yung isa-isa sa pagkatuto ng language. Always read dictionaries, always um read english books or english um post that will help you mm-hmm. learn the language do translation please okay so lagi nating gagawin yan kasi po yan tayo tayo lang din pala tayo lang talaga ang makakatulong sa sarili natin okay okay so let's go further so we have the ideas for supporting and speaking and listening activities Number one, practice where you can, when you can. Okay? So, um, guys, improving your English speaking skills will help you communicate more easily and effectively. So, the first question is, but how can you become more confident on English speaking or being an, an English speaker? Okay po? Lagi nating papraktisin. Okay? Mga pagkakataon na pwede sa mga lugar kung saan pwede. So, any practice is good, guys, whether you speak to someone who is native English speaker or not. Okay po? So, number two, it is important to build your confidence. If possible, if possible, use simple English sentence structure that you know is correct. that you can concentrate on getting your message across. Okay po? Try to experiment with English, you know. Use um, new words and phrases, you know, in new situation. Native English speakers are more likely to correct you if you use the wrong words than if you use the wrong grammar. So experimenting with vocabulary is really good. way of getting feedback. Try to respond to what people say to you, okay? In English language. Okay, but to be one, you can often get clues to what people think by looking at their body language, respond, and your response or your feedback should be, your respond to them should be in natural way. Okay, but try not to translate into in from your own language. Tayo, kapag po tayo nagre-report, kapag po tayo nagde-demo, ang hilig natin mag-explain. Eh, hindi naman talaga tayo nag-explain. Nagta-translate lang tayo. Okay, guys. So, listening or yung pakikinig, yan, mahilig tayo sa mga ganun eh. So, try not to translate into from your own language. Okay po? This takes too much time. and will make you more hesitant, okay po? But it is very important, okay? So, mas maganda na hindi po tayo nagtatranslate in a way that we are just um, translating it word per word, but we are not analyzing it, we are not explaining it. So, try to explain it, okay po? Ma'am, paano? Paano pag namin kaya? Provide a script for yourself. Okay, provide a script and the purpose of your script is to memorize, not to look onto it, okay po, during demonstration or reporting. Okay, class. Okay po, don't speak too fast. It's important to use natural rhythm ha, when speaking English. But if you speak too fast, it will be difficult for people to understand you in the first place. Okay po, hindi po mahalaga yan. Try to relax when you speak. Ayan, yan yung... Um, um, way na dapat na ginagawa natin, you will find your mouth does most of the pronunciation work for you when you relax when you were speaking. Okay po? And when you speak English at normal speed, you'll discover that many of the pronunciation skills such as The linking between words will, ha- will happen automatically. And always remember when we are speaking English, don't be shy. Okay po? The more you do it, 
the more confident you'll become. And lastly, the most important, remember to be polite. Use please and thank you if you ask someone to do it, to do something for you, okay? So what are the motivations class for you to learn English, the lesson English and speak English, okay? Number one, learning English makes it easier to communicate while abroad. If you want to explore the world, it pays to have some knowledge of English. So did you know that 58 countries list English language as one of their official languages? Ulitin ko. Out of 58 countries, um, I, I mean 58 countries in the whole world, they categorize English as their official language. That's why for us to be competitive enough to go abroad or to go to different countries, we have to learn the English language for us to communicate. Okay? Huwag tayo pumunta nung tas ang sagot-sagot lang natin sa mga, sa mga foreigner. Ano? Um, yes? No? Okay? Huwag ganoon. Okay? Maganda po ang opportunity ng teaching abroad. That's why we have to learn English. Para hindi tayo maluloka in the first place. Number two, English is the closest the world comes to having a global language. In five years' time, the total population is likely to be over 7.5 billion, if you do not know. And by 2020, it predicted that 2 billion people all over the world, world will be studying English. So that is over a quarter of the world all, all learning the same language. So it's very important if you have children, guys, already, if you have baby na ha? So, sa may mga anak na dyan, maganda at mahalaga na pag-aralin, panoorin na natin sila ng mga um, panoorin or mga bagay na dapat nilang matutunan in English language. We have Coco Melon. Coco Melon nakakatawa no, kapag ginagawang meme sa Facebook. Pero guys, napakalaking tulong yan. Napakalaking tulong yan sa mga bata. Kapapig no, mga ganyan, mga ba, mga bagay na dapat pinapanood natin. And hindi ka artihan ang pagkatuto ng English language. Lagi niyo tatandaan yan. Okay po? Kasi kapag sila, skill na nila ang English language, ang gagawin na lang nila kapag sila ay lumaki ay mag-interpret, mag-analyze. Naintindihan? So dapat po natin um, tulungan ang mga anak natin. Okay? Pati mga partner nyo, kapag kayo nag-asawa na, iparealize sa kanila na hindi ka artean ang pagkatutan ng ang English, but that is a part of the global language that we have to learn. Okay? Number three, learning English facilitates communication with people from different countries. Okay. Okay, so sabi dito, 40% of the entire planet is now connected to the internet. We can interact with people all over the world without even having to set foot outside, but knowledge of a common language is the key. So language or English language is the key, sabi dito, for us to communicate. Even we are communicating with using our social media, using our internet connection, we have to use language, the global language, which is the English, okay? So you have to learn. We have to, um, kahit hindi tayo English major, no? Kahit yung mga kakilala nyo hindi English major, they really have to learn proper English or um, basic English, di ba? Yung mga tao nga dine in or take off, di alam, okay? Okay po. Kapag po tayo ay pupunta sa mga robotic na sites, like may initial questions na sila, ayaw natin ng ganun. Gusto natin tao talaga kausap kasi hindi natin maintindihan yung uh, mga sinasabi. So they have to use or they have to learn basic English. Okay po? Hindi natin pwede isisi sa ibang tao yung kamangmangan natin. So they have to learn. We have to learn English. Number four, learning English improves the career prospects. English class is the unofficial um, global language of business back in the century, but now it is the official global language in the business. So in fact, some international companies class have even made English their official language. Okay po, being 
proficient in more than one language is always attractive to employees or employers. Okay, particularly if one of those languages is English. So, ano pong ibig sabihin nun when we are applying, lalong-lalo na kapag nasa ibang bansa, kahit na dito sa bansa natin, learning English is very important or speaking English is very important because hindi po lagi mga Pilipino ang boss natin, ha? Hindi po lagi makikipag-communicate sa mga Filipino but even in different natives or different places. Okay? And number five, learning English makes working life easier. Not being able to communicate properly, guys, with key stakeholders is a frustrating barrier to success. 42% of our survey respondents say that we're motivated to learn English to make life easier to them at work. Okay? So it makes our life easier. Okay, so that are the motivations for learning English. And lastly, for our topic today, we have the different varieties of the English language. Language. So we have the varieties of English language. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have British English, American English, Australian English, Canadian English, the Indian English, the Philippine English, and the Ugandan, Ugandan English. So when we say British English class, it is the English language that is spoken and written in the United Kingdom or more broadly throughout the British Isles, okay? Okay po. So, um, slight regional variation exists in formal written English in the United Kingdom. So, that is the British English. And when we say American English, American English is sometimes called the United States English or the U.S. English. This is the set of varieties of English language natives to the United States and widely adapted to Canada. Okay po? So English is the most widely spoken language in the United States and is the common language used by the federal governments considered the de facto language of the country because of its widespread use. So English class in American English has been given official status by 32 of the 50 states government. Can you show kahalaga? Okay. And we have the Australian English. Australian English began to diverge from British English after the founding of the colony of the New South Wales in 1788 and was recognized as being different from British English by 1822. It arose or, or it arose from the it intermingling of early settlers from a great variety of mutually intelligible dialectal region of the British Isles and quickly developed into distinct variety of English. Fourth, from British English in, eight, in 1788, Pagdating ng 1820 to 1822, ginawa po siyang Australian English kasi naging native language na siya ng country ng Australia. Okay po? We have the Canadian English. Canadian English is a set of varieties of English native to Canada. According to 2011 census, English is the first language of approximately 9 million Canadians or the 57% of the population. The remainder of the population were native speakers of Canadian French. That is a 22%. Ulitin natin, 57% of the population used the Canadian English, 22% used Canadian French, and the less, 21% used other language. Okay? Let's continue. So we have the Philippine language or Philippine English. Philippine English class is any variety of English which is similar and related to American English and is native to the Philippines. This includes the use of the media in the vast majority of educated Filipinos. Okay? So English is thought in schools as one of the two official language of the country, the other being Filipino. So yung Philippine English daw po was vast majority used in educated Filipinos. Tignan nyo. 
English po ay ginagamit ng mga tao or ng educated people here in the Philippines. Okay po? O, paano po natututunan ang English sa Pilipinas? English is taught in the schools as one of the two official language. Okay, and then we have the Yugain Dane, English or Yugandan, or the Uglish, pronounced as Yuglish. Okay po? Okay po. Yung Yuglish class, yun po yung tawag sa, yun po yung tawag sa official language ng Uganda or Uganda. It is the dialect of English that was spoken in Uganda as with similar dialects spoken where elsewhere, Ugandan English has developed a strong local flavor. The speech patterns of Ugandan languages strongly influence spoken English. Okay, so that are the varieties of English language. We have, again, the British English, American English, US, Australian English, Canadian, Indian, Philippine, and Uganda. Okay, class, so we are done with the four lesson. Ang galing, no? Four lesson na yun. Okay po. So, yung first topic natin dyan is um, the foundation or the introduction to macro skills. Pinagsama-sama ko na para hindi tayo mahirap, mahirapan na. We have this um, listening. First chapter niya agad. And then we have speaking. Ayan. And then, papasok na tayo dun sa sa learning English or learning English language. So, yan. Dalawa po yan agad. And then the last lesson, the different varieties of English language. So, ganun lang kasimple. So, I have a task that you have to do after this that you have to pass after one week. Okay, so thank you so much for listening. I hope you learned something on this, guys, because this is very important, most especially to you, English educators. So God bless everyone, and mag-iingat lagi. Okay, bye-bye.